What's up guys, what's the with another Marvel Strike Force video and in this video we're going to talk about Dark Dimension 6 we're going to go through the best characters for Dark Dimension 6 on each section we have a tier list for each of the sections which with, with the best characters but we're also going to break down what makes some characters better than others and why you should pair up some characters with other characters for mechanical synergies rather than just team synergies because while synergies team synergies are good sometimes the mechanical synergies are a lot better so we're going to talk about that and you'll maybe understand why i'm so good at dark dimension and on top of that we're also going to remind do the, the daily reminder of the rules for dark dimension there are a the 10 mandaments i guess of dark dimension and if you follow those mandaments that will tell you right away which are going to be the best characters for a specific situation always keep in mind that your performance on dark dimension is greatly depending on which characters we have available how many yellow stars and red stars we have on those characters and also the skill of the player right if the one player with a certain amount of characters can be very good or very bad depends on how well they know, know how to play with that so we are going to go through all of that information and this is going to be the dark dimension video of the month we're going to try to do this every other patch or so just when we have more characters and so on so you don't have to repeat the same information over and over again if you want to know my progress right now on dark dimension i already finished node number one and node number two we have two attacks but i already i was already practicing the the third attack a little bit and we are probably going to finish the second node in uh, four attacks which is great and then we are going through the global section so as you can see the progress is going quite fast if you want to see each of my attacks i do them live on twitch and on youtube daily throughout the week but of course you can also check out the channel I usually upload the compilations with all the attacks put together and uh, then there will be a playlist with the Dark Dimension 6 as well so you can take a look and see what you need to do in order to be as successful as possible. Okay, so that's the introduction of the video. So as always, if you like the information on these videos, make sure you share it to your friends on Facebook and Discord. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe for more Marvel Strike Force content and make sure you smash that like button. I didn't mention but we were uh, we are still top 100 i finished my few node uh, the first node on rank 95 and i hope we can finish around rank, rank 50 uh, the the whole thing because we are getting up the characters extremely fast uh, based uh, on uh, how we got up the characters now in another video we'll talk about how you can get more gear tier 18 faster but we're gonna skip that uh, for now because that is a whole video on its own Okay, so what are the 10 mandaments for a Dark Dimension when you are choosing characters? What is important? The, the speed of the character, the cooldowns and if the characters are able to provide energy or not. Then if the characters provide health steal from the enemies or percentage-based attacks. If the characters have buffs or debuffs to the enemies like stun, like ability block, heal block, like uh, evades, like death proof, like defense up for yourself stuns are very very important in dark dimension then we also have if the characters have decoys or not if we have assist mechanics so there are multiple things i'm not going to mention all of them but there are multiple things that you need to take into consideration when you are selecting your characters to dark dimension and if you follow these 10 mandaments which i mentioned like a video like three years ago or something if you follow these 10 mandaments for dark dimension then you are going to be extremely successful in Dark Dimension and instead of taking like one year to complete it, it's going to take like three months if, if, uh, if so. I can tell you my experience on Dark Dimension 5, for example, I follow these rules that I created and uh, I was able to one-shot all the city nodes on my first run, which was kind of crazy. Okay, so with that in mind, let's take a look at the characters that we are going to use, right? You're going to be able to find all of this information not only on my channel, on the respective playlists, but also on my Discord. My Dark Dimension section has been a little bit neglected, but I'm going to update it with all the tier lists. And of course, we always have a lot of debates on the discussion sections of each topic of Dark Dimension. 
Okay, so let's start. And uh, what is this? Okay, it doesn't matter. Oh yeah, okay, I remember. So let's get started and take a look at the first uh, tier list. And uh, this is for global, right? Global is the first section that is after the unrestricted nodes. And the global is the best section, so you understand the difference between team synergies and mechanical synergies, right? Okay, so we have, for example, Black Widow here. Black Widow is a great character, not only because of her fast speed, not only because she has a stun, so already factors that we mentioned on the, the 10 mandaments, also gives buffs to the allies. She also has assist mechanic, depending on which character you are pairing up with her. And on top of that, she has multiple team synergies with other characters. So Black Widow, she has synergies with Captain America, Captain Sam, with uh, Sharon Carter, also with Hulk Buster. One of the reasons why Hulk Buster is so high, it's because if you pair him up with Black Widow, he's going to be quite amazing. Then Black Widow also has synergies with uh, V Vision and with any Avenger character. So Bionic Avengers, Young Avengers, Wave 1 Avengers, all of those characters will have synergies with the Black Widow and also with Captain America, right? Captain America also has the, the same tags as Black Widow and one is going to give speed up to all those characters, the other one is going to give energy to all those characters. So these are two very important things, low cooldowns and energy generation, speed, all this is extremely important. So I would say that Captain America and Black Widow, they open the most doors in terms of your progress. Captain Sam is also nice, but his synergies are not as great. And then we have to talk about the mechanical synergies. So Captain America gives defense up to all characters. It doesn't matter if they are on the same team or not. He also gives deflects to all characters. Depending on which Iso weight you have on him, it can also be a good dealer because his ultimate gives him 60% turn meter. That means he's going to have multiple turns back to back thanks to that. So that alone is quite great. Captain Sam is also good with his ultimate, giving turn bar to everyone. That's mechanical synergies. We are speeding up the other characters that are not as fast, right? Even if they are not part of the same team. Okay, so then we have Sharon Carter, stuns, ability blocks, defense downs. That's going to increase the damage output of your team. So once again, we have the mechanical synergies, the negative effects, increasing the value of other characters that would not be as important. So for example, if you have Sharon Carter with the Lady Death Strike, of course, both of them are going to be much better. Lady Death Strike is going to turn around the enemies and give time for Sharon Carter to stun or to ability block. And then Lady Death Strike will be attacking on a defense down character or a character with slow, which is great. So as you can see, it's something that you have to take into consideration, mechanical synergies and team and synergies and make the best combination of both. Okay, so we have Spider Weaver also here at the top. You can use Spider Weaver in global. She's mystic, yes, it's great. Uh, but uh, you have to choose. If you don't use Spider Weaver on uh, global, you can use Dagger on city. If you use Spider Weaver on uh, global, you probably will not be able to use Dagger on city. So keep this in mind. Can you beat City without Dagger? Yes, you can, but it's up to you because it's going to be a lot harder. Okay, so yeah, Spider Weaver, stun, charges, healing, buffs, negative effects, trauma. Like, what else can we say? These are going to be probably the top three characters that you can bring. And finally, we have Nemesis. Nemesis is great because he drains the health of the enemies and heals up your entire team with the special and with the ultimate. He also applies slows, he also applies bleeds, and he also gives speed up to himself. Together with Black Widow, he's going to have tons and tons of speed up all the time. And because of that, you can drain the health of the very pesky characters and make your life easy as possible. Because, yeah, you stun the characters and then you just drain their health. You can find this amazing gameplay on this video right here. Node number one of Dark Dimension 6 full run. And you'll see that's exactly what I do and it works very very well okay so let's go back so uh, as i mentioned before we have some assist mechanics with the dark beast we have assist mechanics with silver samurai we have some assist mechanics also with uh, with sharon carter v vision and so on but this is going to depend on which characters you want to bring and which ones you want to prioritize 
It also depends on which gear you got, right? So if you got a lot of bio gear, maybe you want one to bring two bio characters rather than just one. If you got mutant gear, you can bring Apocalypse first and then Nemesis second, or you can just ignore Nemesis. Even that is great. Once again, check out the gameplay to see how good he is. Uh, even that is great. Uh, some people might not like him because he's not farmable and you might not have uh, high all stars or high red stars on him. But it was something that I prioritized early on because I knew he was going to be this great. Okay, so beyond that, uh, Abomination I think is the best of all the gamma because he has a stun, he has offense down, he is the one with the drain, he also heals on turn, he also applies defense down to the enemies. So he has the best uh, kit for uh, Dark Dimension. Hulkbuster gives barrier, applies slow, applies offense down, that will allow your team to survive a lot longer. And once again, because of Black Widow, if you bring Black Widow, Hulkbuster is going to be super, super good. So keep that in mind. Now, Silver Samurai, only bring him if you're bringing Lady Death Strike. If you're not bringing Lady Death Strike, it doesn't make sense to bring Silver Samurai. And uh, Silver Sa Samurai and Lady Death Strike are a good second option if you're also bringing the big apocalypse if it's the small apocalypse i would not bring them but if you have the big apocalypse then this would be a great combination okay moonstone she's also great stuns she has defense downs she gains energy to make more stuns so she has nice survivability now you can pair up moonstone with ultron that's gonna make her even more powerful but ultron is not one of the best characters for dark dimension a lot of single target damage no stuns. He has the decoys that we mentioned as one of the rules, but you want those decoys to stay alive, not to die. And uh, that's why he's not super great and he starts to be one of the, the characters that you don't want to bring. Quicksilver is uh, decent. The piercing damage really comes through. Flipping positive effects on the enemies and uh, his ultimate and special are not impactful enough to, to bring, in my opinion. It's also very expensive in terms of a centerpiece unique, also Misty Gear, so I would not bring a, a Quicksilver. Maybe on the second run, but probably not. And, uh, and that's it. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the characters that are kind of trashy, and we're going to explain why. So, Titania, while she's cheap and while she's great in Cosmic Crucible, in Dark Dimension she's actually quite trash, unless you are bringing Ultron. Because she needs to get buffs for her to be fast, and if you are relying just on the buffs from Captain America or Black Widow, that might not be enough to make her relevant. Her cooldowns are decent, but once again, if you don't have a massive source of speed bar all the time, she's gonna feel kinda sluggish, and a lot of single target damage, which is also not great. She has an ability block, which is nice, but not as good as the stun, so it's uh, something to avoid. Captain Carter, she's okay, she gives more health and armor to Captain America, it's okay. She has assist, she has revive, which is also one of the top 10 rules for Dark Dimension. But uh, she only heals and she only clears negative effects of rebirth characters. And we're not going to bring the full rebirth team because they're all bio, so keep that in mind. Gambit is okay, it's passive damage, it's not great. Agatha is okay, not great. And V-Vision, once again, only bring V-Vision if you are bringing Black Widow and Captain America. She's gonna apply blinds to multiple characters, she's gonna flip negative effects into positive effects, and she also has a debility block. So she's decent, the problem is that she's kinda slow and she's kinda fragile without uh, the Hulkbuster. So in terms, of fragile, or in terms of slow, Black Widow fi fixes that. In terms of fragile, Captain America helps a little bit, but not as much as she needs. Because once again, her health is tied up with the Hulkbuster, giving her 60% extra health, with, which is huge. Gamma characters, forget about them. Not a priority. You should not bring any of these characters to gear tier 18. Some people like to use Brawn for the health steal, but this is what I was mentioning before. Like, if you're relying just on health steal to win, your skill kind of sucks, right? You are just using the, the cheat code in order to win. So, yeah, it. Uh, Somewhat works, but it's not a great recommendation as Bron is a trash character in all game modes. Okay, Agent Venom is okay. The problem is that he's kind of slow and you have to rely on luck from Black Widow to give him the speed up. Ant-Man also okay, very low cost, assists all the time, removes positive effects from the enemies all the time. Ability block for two turns, which is massive, and AoE slow. 
And he also has synergies with Black Widow and Captain America as they're all Avengers. So once again, if you are going to really go cheap, you could use this guy and you can also use him after in Alliance Wars defense and maybe even in raids. We'll see about that. Okay, so a big overhaul over the Yikes characters for uh, Dark Dimension Global. We have what kind of characters and that's because they all rely on Shuri. All of them are mystic as well or at least most of them. You don't want that. Absorbing Man, also Mystic, too slow, doesn't benefit a lot without the full team. Invaders, Skill, which is nice, but they are too slow, and their kits are not great outside of Alliance Wars. Dazzle, Sunfire, and Phantom X, too slow, not relevant enough for Dark Dimension. These characters are all beneficial for short matches, so something that is like just two or three turns, and that's it. Then we have the Young Avengers, they are, they are usable, they are barely usable, once again with Black Widow and Captain America, but I will not bring them. Scarlet Witch, Wong, Misty characters, avoid that. Winter Soldier and uh, US Agent, forget about that. Mary Hill, Mary Hill is okay if you are bringing Captain Sam and also Black Widow, Captain America and so on. She also has a, she also can benefit of assist mechanics if you have a Silver Samurai or if you have Dark Beast. But uh, her stats are not that great, and her speed is not significant enough, her abilities are not significant enough to bring her with you. And then we have all these characters, they are uh, like uh, somewhat usable, somewhat cheap, but uh, they don't have like good places on the meta, and they don't have a lot of uh, good synergies with other characters. They don't have the, the stuns, they don't have the heal blocks, they don't have the, the traumas as well, so it's not great. The only character that would be somewhat relevant here is this last three, Taskmaster, Zombie Iron Man and Emma Frost, but uh, they are expensive to get up and because of that I would not suggest. Like Emma Frost is great, but between Emma Frost and Apocalypse, you are better off with Apocalypse. Okay, so that's the global tier list. Once again, this is going to be available on my Discord. Let's go to the City or Cosmic. We are going to go for the Cosmic first. Okay, Kang. Val. Val revives. Val uh, does ability block to multiple characters. Kang applies slow to multiple characters. Turn rewinds. Defense downs. Gets speed bar all the time. So yeah, these are the two characters that you want to bring for sure. Then uh, we have uh, three very strong uh, secondary options. Phyla Vale, Kestrel and uh, Cersei. Yes, Cersei for Dark Dimension is better than Icarus. Uh, of course, if you are taking Cersei, you could also bring Icarus, but I would not take it. So, Phyla Vel, she's great because she's going to give uh, Drain to everyone with Death Proof, and Val is going to give Death Proof to everyone. So, everyone will have 50% Drain, which is massive. 50% of the damage you are giving, you're getting back as health, so it's very important. Kestrel, she stops summons, she also applies tons of negative effects to the enemies, she also has a ping, which is great with Kang, and she also buffs herself and heals herself, so great. Cersei, she has a stun, flips positive effects. We already know Cersei, right? Okay, then we are going to talk about the questionable options, which is Moonstone or Moon Dragon. Moon Dragon, Starlight Ashala, Deadpool, and Dormammu. So the problem with Dormammu is that he's very expensive. So if you are bringing Spider Weaver to global, you cannot get up uh, Dormammu. If you are not uh, bringing Spider Weaver to global, you could get up. Uh, Dormammu and Val to Cosmic. So it's up to you. I have my Dormammu at 700 stars. I really wanted to bring him to Dark Dimension, but it's just going to take too long to get him up. So we'll see. Maybe there will be a chance if I get lucky with the gear, but unlikely. Deadpool, she's still decent in all game modes. I still use her in raids. Cosmic Crucible, Avengers Tower, Alliance Wars. So it's pretty decent. But it's another mystic character, right? And uh, she's not as significant as Dormammu and even as Cersei. She also gives Drain to mystic characters, but you don't want to bring as many mystic characters as you want because, yeah, we still need them for City. Star-Lord T'Challa. Now, Star-Lord T'Challa is a character that really depends... Star-Lord T'Challa and Moon Dragon. These are characters that really depends of the skill of the player. The, in the right hands, these characters are amazing. If you are not a very skilled player, if you want to, to get as cookie cutter as possible, I would not take either of these characters because once again, you really need that extra skill and experience to know exactly what you are doing with these characters. But their low cost and their utility in other game modes 
makes them quite a significant. Okay, so now you have the seat here. Icarus, only if you are bringing Cersei, otherwise this is not an option. Korg, only if you are bringing Star-Lord or some other nowhere character, otherwise also don't bring Korg. And Star-Lord is okay, but only if you are considering also bringing another nowhere character. He is not fast enough, he plays blind for two turns, but it's not significant enough. Outside of Alliance Wars, his cooldowns are too long and are not impactful enough. So it's something that uh, I would only choose as a last resource. But between Moonstone and Star-Lord, Star-Lord requires a less, uh, smaller skill, skill cap in order to be played with. Okay, Hela, as expensive as Dormammu, that's why she is so low. But you have the Greg, and that Greg makes huge difference. And if you are bringing, like, for example, Star-Lord and Hela, you can apply blind to one of the characters and then spread out blind, which is huge. You can also do that with that pool, but to a, a lesser degree. Gamora and Nebula. I mean, if you are bringing Phylavel, Moon Dragon, why not bring Nebula and Gamora and have a massive team? Then you can pair it up with, uh, with Val. And you have an insane team, right? Even if your Nebula is dying, you can revive uh, her. And this team overall is going to be great because they have so many synergies with each other based on their Infinity Watch team. Okay, then we have the, the mostly trash characters. Cosmo is really, really trash. Silver Surfer, trash. Sylvie, she has some baits for you to get her up to Dark Dimension. It's trash, forget about it. And Thor, Thor can be okay if you are bringing the other nowhere characters. But uh, he is a little bit unreliable because of uh, how slow he is. Better Ray Bill, so this is the old Better Ray Bill. Better Ray Bill probably now would be at a C tier or maybe D tier, thanks to the recent changes that he had. But beyond that, uh, not super impactful as well. He does damage, he gains energy, applies a stun. So once again, because of the new rework, he's a little bit better, but it's not like a 100% viable option. Loki, also not an option, not great. Captain Marvel, not great. Minerva revives characters, deals percentage damage to the enemies, but it's not great. And then the Yikes characters, like these characters, absolutely not. Strange Supreme, Crocodile Loki, Magic, and uh, Ravager's Teacher. Like, this is only if you are desperate to, to just continue and you have nothing else left because uh, it, it's not great. Okay, let's move on to CT. Best city characters, Cloak and Shang-Chi, that's it. Blinds, turning winds, healing, uh, health steal from the enemies, health percentage removal from the enemies, great. Spider-Man is still one of the best characters because of the advice he has. He also has a stun, he also has slow with the defense down to multiple characters. He also has his own drain, so he's still one of the best characters and he's not super expensive. Dagger, only if you are bringing Cloak and if you can afford it. Spider-Woman, even if you're bringing Spider-Man, Spider-Woman, she's decent. She applies offense down to the enemies. She also has an ability block. She's quite fast. She buffs herself with defense up on spawn. She also heals herself. And uh, overall, she's pretty decent. Uh, then uh, Firestar, she's cheap. She applies offense down. She applies a ton of damage to the enemies. So it's okay. B tier, these are characters that are... Uh, somewhat great but they are or very expensive or uh, they don't have a lot of survivability spider-man 2099 is not as good without uh, spider weaver so keep that in mind without spider weaver is fast but not that fast spider-man uh, symbiote or symbiote spider-man he has a stun you can extend stuns with him so if you are bringing og spider-man or any other character that also applies stuns he can be extremely useful by extending those stuns. He also applies slow to multiple characters and his stats actually hold on to Dark Dimension 6. Yes, if you gear him up all the way to level 95 and gear tier 18, he's still very strong. I'm still undecided if I'm going to bring him up or not because he's that good to bring up. Squirrel Girl, I mean, she's great, but she's not that great. She is a little bit overrated for Dark Dimension. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. It's also expensive. Okay, Jessica Jones gives energy, removes negative effects. That's it. The Ghost Spider spreads negative effects. That's it. Like, the city characters are all so bad that uh, I don't even can argue on positives for these characters. Okay. 
Miss Marvel, she's okay. She taunts, she heals herself, and she gives energy. So characters that give energy is always important, especially if you are using Cloak. You want to use Cloak Ultimate all the time, which is very impactful. Okay, Spider-Man big time. For now, he's trash. There are rumors that he's going to get a rework next patch. But until next patch comes, we don't know. So I would not get him up uh, early for Dark Dimension 6. Colin Wing, only if you are bringing Shang-Chi and uh, if you are also considering taking the, the Misty Knight. Uh, because if you use the three of them together, they are actually quite strong. So if you use like uh, the three of them plus Squirrel Girl uh, for Bio and then some other Misty character like Cloak, that's going to be overall a great team with different uh, types of gear, which is going to allow you to gear up faster, right? Uh, Kingpin is great for Dark Dimension 5, but Dark Dimension 6 is not that great. So once again, it's going to be a little bit more skill based. The last node of City has Dead Seed, which benefits a lot of killing minions. So if you are bringing Kingpin and you don't know how to play with him on that specific situation, you're going to get destroyed, which is a problem. Okay, Nico Minoru, this... Uh, what are, what's her name? Misty Knight, Moon uh, Stone, Moon Knight, okay, Moon Knight, Mr. Negative, and, and She Hulk. These are okay characters on specific situations. They are not great. It, it's like we don't have good characters on City, right? From C down, it's all of these characters are all yikes because they're all trash. So I would just focus on S, A, and B tier characters. Maybe C, maybe, but very unlikely. And that's pretty much it. Once again, we just don't have good City characters. Most of their mechanics are tied in uh, specific game modes, and because of that, we don't, we just don't have any options for Dark Dimension Six, uh, like uh, Spider-Man, War, Scarlet Spider, Swarm, Luke Cage, Ghost Rider, Gwenpool, Spider Punk, Miles, Morbius, Iron Fist, Green Goblin. These are all trash characters, like very, very low value. Like Luke Cage gives energy, but he's slow. So that's the problem. These characters have multiple problems with their kids that don't allow them to be relevant enough. So once again, I would just stick from S tier to B tier, maybe C, but that's pretty much it. And then we'll see what's about uh, Spider-Man big time, if he's going to have a rework or not. Those are the rumors. Okay, finally, we have Legendary and uh, Legendary. It might be a little bit uh, hard to decide which characters you want to bring, but in my opinion, it's pretty easy. Morgan Fey, Omega Red, that's it. Those are the two characters you want to bring. Now, Omega Red first, because he's part of the non-restricted legendary. And then you want to bring Shuri and Nick Fury with uh, Omega Red. Then you want to bring Nova, and then you want to bring or Star-Lord or uh, Doctor Octopus or Adam Warlock. If you want to bring a Horseman, Sure, go ahead and do it. The best horseman is going to be Morgan Fay, Red Hulk, Rogue, and uh, Archangel. But I would not go like that. I would just avoid as much as possible taking any of the horsemen. Once again, focus on Omega Red, then Nick Fury and Shuri, then Nova. And then you can wait for whichever the next legendary is coming after Nova. Or you can bring Adam Warlock, Doctor Octopus, and uh, Star Lord. Star Lord gives energy and applies blind, which in greatly increases your survivability. Dr. Octopus summons a decoy, heals the entire team, and also gives speed. He also gives speed to the team. Some people forget about this, but the speed he gives is very important. Then you have Adam Warlock. Applies ability block to multiple characters, applies stun to multiple characters, has a chance of reviving, so he can absorb a lot of damage. So overall, it's quite great. Jubilee, she's also okay if you are bringing Nick Fury and Dr. Octopus. If you can give speed up to, to Jubilee, she can be pretty decent. Stun with multiple slows, she also applies blind to multiple characters. So overall, she can be quite great. Archangel, Trash, Phoenix, she's cheap. She can uh, tap multiple times on the enemies, but it's going to take like two years to complete uh, the legendary nodes with Phoenix, so I would not uh, take it. Black uh, Invisible Woman, any very low relevance. Bla Black Bolt also very low relevance. Magneto, Ebony Maw, and uh, Iron Man. They can be used on very specific situations, but they are extremely expensive. And uh, once again, it has to be a very good skill player to make use out of these characters at the bottom tier. Because yes, they have some value, 
but you need to be very good player in order to maximize their potential otherwise they're not going to be great okay so that's the four tier list that we have for dark dimension 6 on the patch 7.2 i think and uh, this is what uh, your team composition should look like so we have uh, something for global like captain america black widow that would be the core of your team then we have apocalypse and you can bring Sharon Carter for the, the extra stun, defense stun, ability block, and so on. And uh, Nemesis, or you can bring Hulkbuster, or you can bring V-Vision, whichever type uh, you want to bring along, in case you want to skip uh, Spider Weaver. Then, uh, because you skipped Spider Weaver, we could bring another Mystic character for Cosmic, or you can save the Mystic Gear for Dagger, which will make your city nodes very, very easy. So, for Cosmic, Kang and uh, Val are must-have, then Phylavel and Kestrel, and then we have one last slot. If you are skilled, Star-Lord, if not, uh, bring someone else that is easy to play with. For City, once again, if you are skipping Weaver, Cloak, Dagger, Shang-Chi, Firestar, and, uh, or Spider-Woman, or OG Spider-Man. Or if you are feeling ballsy, if you are feeling a little bit crazy, you can also bring uh, the Spider-Man 2099, Spider 2099, Symbiote Spider-Man or OG Spider-Man. Each of them would be great anyway. And then for the legendary characters, if you don't want to wait for the next legendary character, which will be coming next patch, I think, from what I heard, then uh, you can use Adam Warlock, Nick Fury, Shuri, Nova and Omega Red. And on the last section, it doesn't matter. You can use your Apocalypse together with any of these characters, maybe instead of Adam Warlock. And uh, it's going to be great, guys. It's not uh, no problem at all. Once again, we're going to have videos of all of these on the channel. There will be a playlist right here with uh, all of the attacks so you can follow in order to, to follow my gameplay. So even if you are not at the same level as me in terms of skill, you can still follow around. And uh, with the suggestions and with the gameplay I do, for sure you're going to be able to perform somewhat uh, similar. Okay, guys, so that's it. That's the end of the tier list for this patch for Dark Dimension 6. These are the characters you really want to focus on in case you want to make sure you have the most optimized gear while also having the most or the best experience in terms of Dark Dimension and unlock a Super Scroll as fast as possible as it's going to be a very important character in multiple game modes so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you smash that like button and if you found the video helpful make sure you share it with your friends on facebook and discord if you're new to my channel make sure you subscribe for more mobile Force content and i'll catch you guys later